OP started an affair with a married man, believes she is entitled to parent his children, and wants to teach the man's ex how to parent. Then, she had a meltdown after the ex shut her down a truly delusional piece of work. Fake names. Chase, my boyfriend is 33. Jane, Chase's eldest daughter. 8F Alex, Chase's eldest son and second child. 5M Chelsea, Chase's third child. 2F Jessica, Chase's youngest child, is 9 months old. Willow, Chase's ex and the kid's mother. 31 me. 27F. This is how me and Chase met. Chase and his wife first met in January 2011, when he was 20 and she was 18. They began dating for 4-5 years until 2014, when Chase was 24 his birthday is in the summer. They both got married and welcomed a beautiful baby girl on July 14, 2015 called Jane. They had more beautiful babies throughout the years and had a beautiful relationship until Chase filed for divorce in December 2022. Their relationship was breaking down for multiple reasons, such as that they were both too tired to look after Jessica. And I felt bad for Chase because he was made to do a lot of the work and Willow would always berate him. I first met him when I took my niece, nephew and younger cousins to the park, and they were there. I overheard them argue as their children were playing, so they couldn't hear them and weren't noticing. Willow was asking him where the diapers were, and Chase forgot. This has caused an argument since Willow answered back. Please tell me you did not forget the diapers. How am I supposed to change them now hey? With leaves? The baby pooped itself. Can you go back to get them honey? Chase said he can't because he's tired, and he can't walk back six streets away just to get a packet of diapers. What do you mean you can't walk back a few streets away? I was the pregnant one, not you. You don't have to worry after walking a few streets away. Can you at least buy me a new pair of diapers? Chase looked confused. For you too. For the baby. Stop trying to be funny. I will go since you keep on doing my heading. Willow storms off to go to the shops. I asked him, does she always yell at him this much? Chase told me pretty much since she got pregnant with the fourth kid. That's not normal. I'm sorry you had to go through that. It's not normal to treat your partner like that. Pregnancy is not an excuse to be rude to people. How about I lend you a diaper so you can change the baby? I asked him. He thanked me, and then we made small talk. I met their baby for the first time, and she was so adorable. Chase told me her name, and I said hi to baby Jessica. From there, Chase and I became friends. I told him I found the wife needing diapers joke funny, and we had a good laugh. Willow came shortly after, a little stunned, but she didn't think much of it since she had male friends, and she's not the type of person to get paranoid over having friends of the opposite gender. I quickly befriended Willow, and we followed each other on Facebook and Instagram shortly after before coming home. I saw Chase a week later in a pub with his then-wife Willow, as they were having drinks for the first time since giving birth. Willow had to go to the bathroom, and I began to chat to Chase her. I asked if Willow still nags at him, to which he responded yes. I felt bad and said, Don't worry. If she can't treat you right, then I will. Don't tell her, or she will get mad, before winking at him, which made him giggle. The problem. From there, we began dating behind Willow's back until December 13, 2022, when Willow came back with Jane to get her nails done and caught me and Chase cuddling on the sofa watching TV, and she flipped out extremely at us to the point where both Willow and Jane were in tears because of it. Chase tried to explain that it's not what it looks like until he realized no one was buying it. Alex was asking why his mom was yelling at his dad until Jane pointed at me and said it was my fault. Alex looked sad and went back upstairs. I told Willow we were sorry but it was not appropriate to argue in front of the kids and to think of the children. Willow screamed back. If you care so much about the kids, then why did you break up their family? I finally found happiness after such a rough life I went through, and you ruined it just because you wanted Chase for yourself, just because you're jealous and you couldn't find anyone, so you had to steal people away from others. Willow suddenly realized Jane was watching everything and began crying and apologizing to the children for making them watch that. She wasn't thinking straight but she didn't mean to upset them. The younger ones were just scared and stood there, but Jane told her it's okay, and it's not her mom's fault that I'm horrible. I went quiet because I didn't know a seven-year-old seven at the time knew what those words meant, but I guess she was repeating them from their mom, so that's what influenced her to act that way. I apologized and explained to her that it wasn't appropriate for us adults to argue in front of children. I explained how I tried to get them to stop, but her mother wasn't listening. She told me that me and her dad shouldn't make my mom angry if I didn't want her to shout at me, called me a fat pig, and told me to get lost. She stormed off to her bedroom. How does a seven-year-old know such details?
I tried to explain that I am sorry for breaking up her family, and asked if she wanted to move on, put that in the past, and that me and Chase will always love the kids. Alex and Chelsea accepted my apology, but Jane kept on ignoring me. Chase and I got kicked out, and he filed for divorce on December 15th, the court thing is still going on. They ended up getting 50-50 custody, not right away. When they first got to my house since I offered Chase, and the kids to move to mine since I have more room, I wanted to welcome the kids by giving them a hug. But Jane pulled them away and said, She hurt mummy and made her sad. So don't go near her and told me she didn't want me here, and she only came because she was forced to. I gave them their teddy bears with their names on them, which I got knitted by my sister just for them with my own money Chase offered to pay, but I refused. I thought it wouldn't hurt to give the kids a small welcome present. Jane told me she hated the teddy bears, and they look ugly. She said she has her own one that Mummy gave, and Mummy's one was better. Why is she acting like her mom's personal therapist? It's not her job to look after her mom's feelings, and I said that she doesn't need to look after her mom, and she said she isn't forced, and that I want to look after Mummy forever, even though she says I don't have to, and it's her job, but I still want to, and she isn't forced. And she accused me of trying to make her hate her mom. Jane came running back down to sit on the sofa. She used her fingers to go through the sewn-up teddy bears and rip them apart, then stormed off to her bedroom. I went to my bedroom and cried. I got that made personally just for the children as a welcome gift, and she destroyed it. Why is she rude to me every time she comes to my house? I know I upset her mother, but I want her to bond with me, but she wouldn't let me. I tried to come to her events, but she ran up to her mom and dad in happiness, then pulled a tantrum every time she saw me and said, what am I doing here? And she didn't want me here. She says she won't stop pulling a tantrum until I go, and I had to leave almost every family event in tears, because everyone would stare at me and give me dirty looks. She even skipped a few of her siblings' events because I was there, and she said she won't go if I'm going. Willow tells me that I should have thought about that before breaking up the family, and I say I know and I'm sorry. I've already been punished enough, and now my own boyfriend's parents and family hate me, and don't want me at family events because they want Willow to feel safe in their home. And Jane always starts crying every time I'm joining in. She got along well with Chase eventually, but she still hates me. Last month this year, I showed up with Chase to celebrate her birthday, as Chase was invited. But she began screaming and crying and said she didn't want me here, and I ruined her birthday. She grabbed my present, opened it up, and broke the doll into pieces before throwing it in the bin. She said it was the worst present ever and made me cry. Willow said, well, no one told you to cheat with my ex-husband and break up the family. You should have thought about that beforehand, and it's her choice. If she doesn't want you here, then you should leave since I didn't even want you guys coming here. But I only invited you both just so you don't sue me for parental alienation. Me and Chase were cussed out by the entire adults, especially Willow's granddad, who came up to me and screamed at me, saying it was my fault for breaking up the family and manipulating Chase, along with Chase's mom even trying to escort me out with his dad, escorting both of us out. It even got to the point where now she will get up, get changed, have a shower, have breakfast, brush her teeth, go to her maternal grandparents, my parents, or go out in the town with her mom all day. Then come back late at night at 8.30pm, brush her teeth, get dressed, and go to sleep. She even demands she have sleepovers to get away from me and her dad during his custody turn. He tried to sue for parental alienation. But the judge said, unless she's sleeping over her mom during our custody term, then her meeting up with her mom outside of her house, is not violating custody agreements. I messed up. I tried to call a therapist yesterday. But Willow threatened to take me to court if I tried to do parental stuff. And it turned out she already put them in therapy ages ago. And the therapist said, while bonding with Chase will be nice, she doesn't have to hate me if she doesn't want to as long as she's being civil and won't take it out on potential half-siblings in the future. How do I get her to stop avoiding me and hating me and get her to understand that she doesn't have to be afraid of what her mother thinks? TLDR. I am dating a man, and his kid hates me because I was a mistress. How do I bond with them when they hate me? I was only trying to protect their dad from their mother's abuse, and now I'm worried she is turning her kids against me, even though her kids said she could make her own mind up. But because she and her mother get along well, I'm concerned she is worrying about her mother too much, and is scared that she will upset her. Update. Fake names. Chase. 33M me. 27F. Jane 8F. Alex. 2F Jessica is 9 months old. Babysitter. 20F Mom. 60F. Me and Chase were going on a date night. I hired a babysitter to watch over my boyfriend's children while we go out to a restaurant outside of our local area to eat out. 
Chase had some rules that the children sleep at 11 p.m., are not allowed fizzy drinks, and are not allowed to drink or invite people to our home. They aren't allowed to take the children out after 7 p.m. That sounds reasonable, in my opinion. I told the babysitter I made chicken nuggets. There were lollipops, packets of crisps, sweets, or a bowl of fruit. And I also made some cheesecake if they got hungry. I let her know not to serve them all at once, but they were just options. I even got juice cartons with straws in case they were thirsty, and she understood. I gave her a list of instructions so she knew how to look after the children, and then me and Chase took off. I came back two hours later. It would usually take one hour and thirty minutes, but there was traffic, and I let the babysitter know and I apologized, which she accepted and said she understood. And I found the babysitter feeding Jane, Alex and Chelsea a can of Coke with three packets of Smarties, each not one packet per child, three packets per child, which me and Chase didn't even buy, and the Coke cans were on the highest shelf on our fridge which the children besides Jane wouldn't even notice if they opened it because the fridge is tall. Chelsea had coke dripping down her shirt and chocolate around her mouth, and Alex came up and cried to me and Chase because his stomach was hurting. I wondered where Jessica was, so I went to her cot. She has two cots, one upstairs and one downstairs in the living room, and she was in the one in the living room and found her eating a whole banana to herself. Jessica is being introduced to solids, but she can only eat apples and bananas if they are cut up which is what was said on the paper. Chase immediately took the banana off Jessica, which led to her crying. Chase would have let the babysitter off with a warning had it just been the coke or the three packets. Had the packets just been the packets we bought, Jess could have been choking and suffering had she eaten the whole banana. Not to mention, the babysitter brought a can of beer and drunk it at our home and left the children home on their own. Chase was understandably mad and fired the babysitter on the spot, while only giving her half of the money that she should be getting even getting mad at the babysitter for going out, while leaving the children on their own with Jane to look after since an eight-year-old shouldn't be babysitting younger children and drinking it while looking after the babies. Anything could have happened to his kids if they were left on their own for that long. It's not like Alex, Chelsea, and Jane were 12, 15, and 19, because if that were the case, then I wouldn't be that mad since someone of that age can look after themselves on their own for a short while. But a five-year-old, a two-year-old, and a nine-month-old should never be left alone and I'm just glad nothing happened to them. I even admit that I flipped out at the babysitter as well. The babysitter left in tears after promising it wouldn't happen. But I didn't want to risk the children's safety. And neither did Chase, so we said to her, it doesn't matter if it doesn't happen again. You left four young children on their own. She was drinking alcohol while babysitting, and she broke a lot of rules, and we weren't going to compromise the children's safety. The children Jane, Alex and Chelsea were up, and Jessica stayed in her crib after their dad sent them up, so we could have a word with the babysitter. So they didn't hear much since they had headphones on and were watching cartoons on their tablets upstairs. That was that. Once the babysitter left, we went back up to put the children to bed before you ask. We cleaned the chocolate off Chelsea, and I took her to the bathroom, which was next to the kitchen, to change while Chase was telling the babysitter off, while Jane and Alex just got wipes to wipe off the chocolate around their mouths. A few hours ago, I vented to my mom, but she complained that me and Chase were too harsh on the babysitter and everyone makes mistakes, so maybe we were being too hard on the babysitter. Ada, were Chase and I harsh on the babysitter? Extra information. Just in case you're concerned about us storing junk food, we don't usually keep junk food around our house. We just had one multi-pack of eight chocolate bars and one multi-pack of six packets of crisps, but we don't eat them too often. This was just a treat, and we limit how much junk they can eat, and they're not too big on junk food. Update. BKBM boyfriend's biological mother got mad because she couldn't afford to get her son. A Lego set the Lego set cost 15 pounds, and her son came to me crying when it was my boyfriend's turn to get custody, because his mom wouldn't get it because it was too expensive. He asked me why his mom can't afford toys over 10 pounds, and I told him don't worry. Some people can't afford nice things, but it's okay, because I will buy them for you instead since I have enough money. I took him shopping with me to buy the Lego set he wanted, and he got to take it home with him, this Monday when he went over to his mother's house and according to his mother, he went on about how much he loves me because I bought him a toy. Apparently this made her mad because when me and my boyfriend came over yesterday to collect the kids, she had a go at me and started accusing me of trying to turn her son against her, because now apparently her son says he likes me more because I can buy him the Lego set, and she couldn't, so he loves me more. I tried to explain to my boyfriend's son that not everyone can afford nice things, but that wasn't good enough for her because I'm apparently trying to cause drama even though she is the one who argues in front of her and my boyfriend's kid instead of talking to us privately like grown-ups. 
I was just trying to look out for her financially and save her the burden of spending a lot of money because she isn't broke. But she can't afford stuff that most people can. My boyfriend even said that we're not trying to cause drama and that he can return it if he wants, to which she said. So what? You can tell the kids that I won't let them play with toys you and your girlfriend buy and have them hate me even more they don't hate her. But her son wished she could buy him toys over 10 pounds. I'm not falling for that. You know what it is? Forget it. But if you even try to pull that with me and try to turn the kids against me, then there will be serious trouble. She said goodbye to my boyfriend's kids and headed home. My boyfriend's son asked if he would be in trouble. And if he wasn't allowed to play with his Lego. To which me and his father said not to worry and nothing would happen. We said he could play with it if he wanted. He doesn't touch the Lego set now because he's scared that his mother will get upset, even though it's just a toy. This isn't the first time that she has tried to poison my boyfriend and her kids against us. And even the law had to step in, get her in trouble, and warn her that we could sue her for parental alienation if she turns the kids against us. She tried to sue us for parental alienation once and lost. So now she's bitter that she can't turn the kids against us. I didn't think trying to save my boyfriend's children's mother money and spending a lot on a toy was a bad thing. But it's now bad co-parenting and overstepping. Was I really overstepping? Update. Me, my boyfriend, and his children are going abroad in December to visit his family for Christmas. One of them is a baby yes, BM is okay with it. And we booked her a hotel and paid for her ticket and plane as well. And my boyfriend will also pick her up. And this is my first time traveling with a baby 1F as a grown-up 27F. Because I do not want to disturb the other passengers on the plane. What can I bring to put a baby to sleep? And how can I put a baby to sleep on a plane? I will bring her favorite teddy bear, and I will put on cartoons for her. But she will be tired since the plane ride will be long, and I can't really walk around while holding her when she is crying because other people do not want to hear her cry understandably. So how can I put a baby to sleep on a plane? What have you done to soothe a crying baby on a plane, or put a baby to sleep on a plane? Update. Ada for ruining BM's holiday. I 27F and my boyfriend 33M traveled to the USA on December 15 to celebrate Christmas. We decided to come 10 days before so I could explore the area a bit and surprise them. But they were more excited to see my boyfriend and BM we went to his family straight after arriving. We didn't know they invited BM until they came over to give my boyfriend and his children hugs. I wasn't expecting a hug, but I wanted to greet them. But his mom said, oh it's you, then whispered to my boyfriend's dad. She's the girl BM's name was telling us about. I let it slide because they met me for the first time, so I didn't think much about it. I introduced myself, and they just said hi and came in. I was a little disappointed, but I entered. I complimented the house and got thanked. I went upstairs because we booked my boyfriend's mom a hostel for her and her and my boyfriend's kids to stay in, and it was sort of expensive since we had to pay for five people one grown-up, two kids, a one-year-old baby, and a toddler. She asked what I think I'm doing, wondered what I'm doing, and wandered around people's homes like that. I was confused because I thought we were staying here. No, it turns out BM and the kids were staying here, and that me and Chase fake name for my boyfriend in this post can book a hotel instead. We were both shocked, but I didn't want to cause a scene, so I just took my luggage downstairs. We left after half an hour since I was getting bored, and they were so excited to talk to BM and my boyfriend that they almost forgot I was there. I tried not to take it personally since we had never met before, and I was tired, so I didn't think too much about it. Due to it being BM's custody turn, me and Chase said goodbye to the kids, and we headed off to the hostel to cancel the hostel room, which was complicated because we had never done that before, but we got it done. We booked two hotel rooms for ourselves, which annoyed us since we wanted to spend time together, but it was too expensive to book a six-bedroom hotel, so we split it. He was sharing a room with his two kids 8F and 2F, and I had his other two kids 5M and 1F. I was upset and on the verge of tears, but I decided to let go and see what Christmas was like. Christmas ended up being on BM's custody day, but it was Christmas, so we had an extra few hours. Christmas at his house starts late, at 6 p.m. While the turkey was being made, me, Chase, Kuitney fake name for 8F, BM, and other grown-ups helped my boyfriend's mom make the food, which was quick. We finished at 6.46 and had our Christmas dinner at 6.50. We finished at 7 p.m and we were looking forward to dancing, games, Christmas stockings, gift-giving and Christmas carols, but it turns out BM only let Chase have custody of the kids until 6.59, which meant we had to go back to our hotels. We thought we would have Christmas gifts and be included, but it turns out we didn't have Christmas stockings for us, and only Chase received gifts. I was ignored the whole time, and given dirty looks by his relatives and siblings, 
who all made it clear that they disliked me. His grandparents were lecturing me about how they liked BM more. Chase apologized to me and defended me by having a go at his family, while BM was smirking at me while no one was looking. I was so upset that I just stormed out of the house with my boyfriend, tagging along as we headed to the car he rented. We headed back to our hotel rooms, and I was on the verge of tears, so I was crying for the whole night. We put all this effort and money in only to be told I wasn't welcome, and I was only invited to make Chase stay over. I am so disappointed. I know we were going to stay over for the new year, but we were so put off by our Christmas and holidays with me, so we decided to shorten our holiday and leave tomorrow. BM was angry with us and decided to come because she felt like she had no choice since they have 50-50 custody of the children, and they agreed that one parent cannot be left abroad with the children without the other parent being with them. I can't believe my and my boyfriend's Christmas and holiday got ruined just because his family wanted BM there and not me. BM's now having a go at me for ruining her trip because I couldn't suck up my feelings for one holiday. Did I ruin her holiday? Was I to edit? My boyfriend's family prioritized his ex-wife over me, so I wanted to leave. I did ideally want to leave by myself so my boyfriend, his kids, and their mom could enjoy themselves, but he wanted to leave, causing his kids and their mom to leave because of a custody agreement they both agreed on, which states that no parent is allowed to go abroad without the other one present in the same country. Now BM is mad at me for ruining her holiday. Sorry for not adding this earlier. Update. My boyfriend's daughter 8F had the audacity to tell her school and friends that I'm her personal servant and that I'm an unpaid nanny who lives with her dad. But I am so livid that my boyfriend's daughter would try to brush me off as some nanny or hired servant and my boyfriend or his daughter's mom can't pick her up due to my boyfriend being ill and his kid's mom's car having broken down. I understand I'm not her parent, but I do want her to be civil, at least as her father's girlfriend, since they are also in my care during his custody time and I help look after his children. It feels like even a personal servant, maid, or unpaid nanny gets more respect and is taken more seriously. I don't usually pick her up, but she was feeling sick and no one else was able to pick her up. My boyfriend's kid's mom went to NC with her parents, so they can't pick her up. And there's a virus going around where I live, so that's why a lot of people are poorly and unable to pick her up. His parents are in the United States. My boyfriend does something about her behavior. He tells her off, and she's even in therapy, which we changed therapist to but I still can't believe she would disrespect me like that regardless. I decided I didn't want to put up with her disrespect, and I want to not pick her up anymore if she continues to disrespect me, but I feel bad about leaving a sick child at school or murdering her maternal grandparents and my boyfriend. Wipta if I stop picking up my boyfriend's daughter, edit to add. But I also want to add that I am on the emergency contact list. Apparently she got this idea from a post on social media where a girl referred to her stepparent as her personal servant because one of her cousins uses Reddit most of her cousins are older, and she overlooked the post and thought it would be funny to do it to me as well. Edit. For anyone wondering, Chase was poorly because the temperature is going really low in the UK where I live, and he caught a bad cold as a result, which left him really weak, coughing badly, headaches, and stomach cramps. He felt too weak to move around a lot, so he couldn't drive. Otherwise, he would have picked her up himself if it was just a mild cold. Update. Thank you for your feedback, guys. The conclusion has come that I am TBF, and I won't stop picking her up or getting offended over one comment. Thank you very much for putting things in perspective. We had a meeting after my boyfriend picked up his kids about her attitude towards me and me overreacting to her comment. I decided to apologize for overreacting and to laugh off any comments or play along next time. I decided to make the personal servant comment into a joke, because when my boyfriend and I went to pick up the children, I rolled the window down and said, Your personal servant's here to pick you up. This made the kids laugh, and they entered the car. When we arrived home, we had a meeting about Kuitney calling me her personal maid and me overreacting. I apologized for overreacting, and she told me it's okay. She didn't speak to me, but that's okay because as long as she's safe and happy, that's all that matters, and I put my feelings aside for the sake of the children. I decided to bake chocolate cupcakes for my family since my sister, Bill, niece, and my parents were coming to visit. The children loved the cake, especially my boyfriend's son who tried to sneak another cake thinking I wouldn't notice. But that's okay since we were all having a good time. Overall, we had a good time and went to watch football the next day as well. Everyone had a good time overall as I turned the personal servant into an inside joke and said jokingly, The personal servants are here to serve her master's chocolate cupcakes. I love learning from my mistakes and making the best of any situation that comes my way.
I am blessed to have a good weekend with my boyfriend and his children. Update. It's my partner's birthday party coming up soon, and I want to make him this cake. But his mom does not approve of this design. This isn't our cake. It's a picture on the internet. I will send the link to the cake after posting this. Link is in the description. We all shared responsibilities to plan out his birthday party, and I got the duty to make his birthday cake. She is complaining that there is too much chocolate on his birthday cake, which will make him sick, and that it is too unhealthy for him to eat. Should I take off the chocolates and leave the big chocolate bars on, or should I just take off all the chocolates and leave the footballs on? My partner's son really wants the cake, but his mom is complaining that his birthday cake is too unhealthy. Update. It's my first time hosting Easter at my house. Are there any ideas or things I can add? What do you do for Easter with your family? I've never hosted an Easter party before, so I'm out of ideas. What do people usually do on Easter with their families? I want to make an Easter cake and have an egg hunt for the children, but I know that will be boring if I only have an egg hunt followed up by an Easter cake. What other ideas and stuff can I add for my Easter party? Is there anything else I can add to my Easter party, like food, decorations, and games? Update. Wibta, if I take my boyfriend's daughter with me to my parents for Easter. Fake names for privacy. Chase my boyfriend. Kuitney, his eldest daughter. Sophia, his youngest daughter. I just want a vent because I put a lot of effort into hosting my family this Easter. I organized an Easter egg trial where I hid clues around the garden, and each egg had a clue to the prize. The first one to get there had a prize, which was a large chocolate Easter egg that came in a box. I buried it in a small pirate chest, which I decorated with Easter egg stickers and pain with the help of my boyfriend's children, which all of them enjoyed taking part in. I organized it with my boyfriend for the children, along with a small Easter egg hunt afterwards, which me, my older sister, and my boyfriend organized with the help of my grandparents, Kuitney and my older nieces, one of whom is the same age and the other is older than her by two years, while everyone went to eat inside. Kuitney didn't want to take part in the Easter egg hunt, and that is fine, but she ended up telling her younger sister where all of the chocolate eggs were. I told her not to tell the younger ones, but she insisted she was supervising the kids. I got upset when she blurted out the answers. Chase got upset and told her off. He tried to take the half-eaten Easter eggs off of Sophia, but she cried, and we knew it wouldn't be fair to punish Sophia. So I just told him that she could have them, but put the rest away so she could have them another day and take them home to her mom. Plus, the youngest one seemed happy. She found all of the eggs even though Kuitney gave away the locations, and the other children's quickly rushed and argued over who got the egg first, leaving the younger ones to five out, and the younger ones started crying because they didn't have any eggs. My younger nieces and nephews and my boyfriend's other kids were crying, so I had to give away the eggs I promised to Sophia and buy her a toy and another two Easter eggs to make up for. And I gave my sister 15 pounds to take Sophia to the local corner shop and get her a large egg and a toy and the extra change can be Sophia's pocket money from me. I felt like telling Kuitney off, but I couldn't. Chase told her off and threatened to send her to her room without her phone if she pulled another stunt. She calmed down until the kids went inside, and she told the younger kids they are around two six years old, where the Easter baskets where I put chocolate eggs and small toys in them for the kids to take home after the party. But I hid them inside a cabinet, and they went over to the kitchen and raided the baskets and started fighting over the toys. I didn't even notice until I heard the kids arguing and crying in the kitchen, and the chocolate Easter cake that I bought was half eaten, and that I was going to serve. In the end, I broke down. But I tried not to cry in front of the kids, so I went to my bedroom, and I cried. I put in all that effort for my family, and it was all ruined. My boyfriend comforted me, and my family the adults joined in to comfort me, and sent Kuitney to her room without her phone. He did have a go at her, but I thought it was a bit too harsh so I thought it was better to just send her to her room without electronics and explain to her why it wasn't okay to ruin Easter since it wasn't worth the hassle anymore, and I don't want to spend Easter nagging at her. My dad offered to buy some chocolate eggs and organize an egg hunt at his home next week with the help of my boyfriend, me, my brother, and my two sisters, while my mom and my older two nieces can help with the food, and I can design the cake and the desserts. My dad makes a basket with eggs for Kuitney so she doesn't get left out since they don't want her to come over if she ruins Easter at their place. But we all agreed it wouldn't be fair to exclude her and punish her further. So we agreed that she can be there if she doesn't ruin the Easter egg hunt again, since it would be unfair if we excluded her as long as she isn't left unsupervised. My boyfriend and my older sister think that we should leave Kuitney at home with him and take the other three with me to my parents. But me and my grandparents don't think it would be fair to leave her behind 
and miss out on all the fun just because she acted up a bit and everyone else was neutral. My family doesn't mind her coming to the next one as long as she is being supervised and doesn't spoil the egg hunt. Wibta if I take Kuitney with me. Edit. I forgot to add that she is eight and the youngest is one. The only reason we couldn't discipline her as much is because every time we did, HCBM would have a go at me, and he gets in trouble with a court as a result. But I will consider this and not bring her with me. I will bring the other three since they didn't ruin the event, but we decided that she wouldn't be allowed to go to the redo and would come out of her pocket money to make up for the money I lost. Update. The following post is not about the kids, but belongs here. I can't work anymore without getting in trouble about doing my job and feeling uncomfortable. So I want to report my workplace for unfair dismissal. My former co-worker quit their job a while ago because I kept constantly reporting them to HR for having bad hygiene and body odor. My manager had a meeting with me because they think I have a negative attitude toward the workforce. This wasn't the first incident, allegedly. I was open and honest with my interns that worked with me, and I had to give constructive criticism after the end of every term, and I got introverted for doing my job. I mentioned that the interns' clothes were not appropriate for the workplace, and that they needed to work on their appearance, since I believed it was not professional. They had scruffy hair that looked like it was never brushed, their teeth were yellow, and they wore dirty clothes with stains. They would go on their phones all day and use mental health, being unable to focus as an excuse to not work. They would stare out of the window or play games on the computer at high volume. Eventually I had enough and decided to call them out on their behavior firmly in a review meeting, which led them to cry on the spot and make excuses for themselves. I'm sorry, but I won't sugarcoat them just because they are a college intern. I don't know how to describe it, but there is a college that has an internship program for people who do work experience in different workplaces each term. I do not understand the concept of it, and it still confuses me since I don't know if they are a student or an intern but I was told that I was being too harsh on them. Why did they bother organizing these review meetings if you're not allowed to give your honest opinion on feedback? I was given a lecture on being sensitive towards students and interns, which I found useless. So I mentioned how there was no point in having those meetings if interns could not take basic criticism. I was told this was not my first incident with not being able to interact with colleagues appropriately since I also made another co-worker quit in tears after I commented on their smell. I explained that their smell was distracting me and it was distracting me from working. What was I supposed to do if I wasn't allowed to swap desks? More incidents occurred where I policed what people put in microwaves and got into an argument with a colleague for putting a fish curry in the microwave, and I was lecturing them for making the kitchen smell. I didn't do anything wrong. I don't like coworkers who put fish or other food in microwaves that stink out the room. The last incident was that I snapped at another student intern for leaving dirty mugs on the desk at the weekends, which they left me to clean up. I was very annoyed that I had to help out students and interns, but I had to do it in exchange for a promotion and extra pay. I was told that my behavior was unacceptable and that I would be dismissed. Before I went home, I was told not to return to work until they said I could. I'm not even allowed to have opinions without getting introverted or give feedback because it hurts their feelings. How do I file a complaint for unfair dismissal and getting introverted just for doing my job? Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.